Do you remember this penguin in Snowman's Land in Super Mario 64? You have to hide behind this penguin so the snowman's head doesn't blow you off the icy bridge and make you lose your hat? Well, there are a lot of interesting places in Super Mario 64 where you can grab onto ledges. But what if I told you that this penguin's head is one of those ledges that you can grab onto? Mario can grab this ledge and appear to be inside the model of the penguin, and we can just see his hat peeking out from certain angles. The penguin keeps moving back and forth along the ice bridge and you're safe here. As long as you're holding onto the penguin, the big snowman's head won't blow you away. And you can even climb up onto the penguin's head and you can do a little dance while you're up here. This level was designed so that you have to hide behind the penguin to cross the bridge, but it looks like you could also make your way across by being on top of, or even inside, the penguin. You might have had Mario start to fall asleep if you stand still for long enough. You might be wondering if Mario can take a nap while resting on top of the penguin. There are four conditions that must all be true for Mario to fall asleep, and unfortunately, Three of these conditions, or if Mario has low health, then all four of these conditions are false while Mario is on top of the penguin. So Mario can unfortunately not fall asleep while he's on top of the penguin. Since this is considered a cold course, Mario can't fall asleep in this course, but if the other three conditions are met in areas in this course, then Mario will play an animation of being cold if you stand still for long enough. For years, it was thought that Snowman's Land had 126 coins total, but according to SM64.com, it was in early 2002 that Josiah found a secret invisible coin in this level. Using a cannon shot at a very precise angle is an easy way to reach this coin, and you can see that Mario's coin count increases from 0 to 1 once you reach this invisible coin. A fun fact about this invisible coin is that the Collect All Coins speedrun category of Super Mario 64 requires that you get this invisible coin. And speaking of speedruns, the In The Deep Freeze star is currently the fastest star ever collected in Super Mario 64 history. Even as a beginner of the game, it's very easy to collect this star in just a few seconds with some practice, using a triple jump to get up here, and then jumping and diving into the hole getting the star. The world record uses a slightly different strategy with a time of 5.3 seconds. You might have known that if you fall from a certain height onto snow, Mario gets buried in the snow before popping out, whether his legs sink into the snow or whether he falls in head first. But another fun fact is that the same thing happens on ice. Mario smashes head first through a sheet of ice, and the chill bully boss can come chasing after him here. Even though this looks like it's a vulnerable position for Mario, thankfully Mario can't get pushed around while half of his body's through a sheet of ice and just his legs are dangling out. There's something interesting about this igloo in Snowman's Land. Normally, you slide into this igloo, and once you're inside, you experience some of the worst camera angles in the game. You can collect some coins, you can open the cannon here, there's a vanish cap here, and this is where you have to go to get the Into the Igloo star here. What's interesting about this igloo is that normally, you can only enter this igloo from the entrance, from the big hole at the front. But, the collision detection for the back of the igloo is a bit wonky, and if you jump at a specific spot into the back of the igloo very precisely, you can enter the igloo without entering from the front. In some of your adventures in Snowman's Land, you might have jumped onto these enemies called Spin Drifts to get either the Whirl from the Freezing Pond star or to get the Koopa Shell here. You can jump on either of these Spin Drifts in the pond and both can launch you into the air and let you reach the area with these boxes. But if the Spin Drift is too close to the wall, you'll fall straight into the water instead of spinning up in the air with a boost. If you've already destroyed the first spin drift and you really want to make sure to get a boost from the second spin drift so that you can get up onto this platform, then you want to make sure that the spin drift is far away enough from the wall. If the spin drift is far away enough from the wall, then this will work, but if the spin drift is too close to the wall, then when you jump on it, it'll just burst into coins and you'll fall straight into the water. If you do accidentally destroy all of the spin drifts, there are still a few ways to climb up here. And this tip that I'm about to give you can be used to scale many slopes in Super Mario 64. So let's say you swim over around to the side where Mario normally slides down here, you hold down your A button before Mario starts to stand, 
and then you tap the B button while holding down the A button the entire time and not letting go of A, tapping the B button, then Mario will do jump kicks and he'll be able to climb this slope without sliding back down. This technique can be used to scale all kinds of slopes, whether it's in Snowman's Land or even similar slopes in other levels, and this is something that's used in a lot of speedrun strategies. This enemy that pretends to be a coin and turns into an enemy when you get close is called a money bag. Normally, the money bag gives you five coins when you kill it, and there are normally only two of these in the course. There's one near the entrance, just in front of these two coins, and there's one near the pond with the spin drifts. These money bag enemies can be duplicated if Mario gets within the right distance of the money bag at the right moment after being at least a certain distance away. This is something that's pretty difficult to pull off because it's very easy to be too quick or to be too late or to accidentally defeat the money bags or even to accidentally die to them. But after duplicating these money bags, they'll continue to work as normal, you can keep duplicating them, and each one of them will burst into 5 coins as you defeat them. You'll also want to be careful if you're trying to duplicate as many money bags as possible because if you leave the course or if you enter the igloo and then you come back, you won't have all of these money bags anymore. The Chill Bully, who is a boss in Snowman's Land, is normally defeated in a way that's similar to the boss in Lethal Lava Land. You have to kick or push it off the platform in some way, then it sinks into the freezing water below, and you get the star to spawn and you can collect the star. But, what if instead of pushing this boss into the freezing water, you started pushing the boss down this slope? Just how far down the slope could you take this boss? You can continue to move the boss down this slope, and at a certain point, it stops taking an interest in you and tries to walk off this slope. If you keep pushing the boss down, the boss eventually sinks into the floor, which is pretty strange to see, and the star appears normally, and you can collect the star as usual. If you push the boss so far away that it loses interest in Mario, then you can just sit here, watching it try to make its way back to the platform. But if it doesn't make its way back to the platform, it can accidentally walk onto the ground and sink itself into the ground. As a special bonus fact for those of you that watched to the end of this video, you might have noticed in Super Mario 64 that there are big and small bullies in the Lethal Lava Land level. But in Snowman's Land, there's a big chill bully, but there aren't any small chill bullies. Mario Wiki says that a smaller version of the chill bully was actually included in the code of Super Mario 64, but not included in the game. If there's another course of Super Mario 64 that you'd like to see a video like this about, let me know in a comment and make sure that you're subscribed so that you can see that video. Thank you for watching this video, hope that you all have a great day, wishing all of you all the best, and take care everybody.